Hello, everyone. My name is Steve, and welcome to the first episode of the Architecture by Design podcast, a podcast exploring the stories behind the architecture. Each time we get together, I'll share with you an interesting story about the buildings and the architects who designed them. This first story talks about the inception of one of the 20th century's most iconic houses. I hope you enjoy, but before we dive into our story, I would like to tell you about archbydesign.com, the website bringing you this show. It's a website that celebrates the world of architecture through intriguing articles talking about architecture history and discussing today's architecture. There's also photo galleries and so much more. Whether you're an architect, a student, or have a casual interest in architecture, there's something there for everyone. So check them out today and begin exploring. Now, on with our story. It was a bright Sunday morning in 1935, September 22nd, to be exact, when a call came in from Milwaukee. Frank Lloyd Wright went and answered it. Hello, said the architect in a regal manner. I'm on my way, said the man on the other end of the line. The man in Milwaukee was a client of Wright's, E.J. Kaufman, the owner of a large department store in Pittsburgh. He was the first major client Wright had had in a while. Kaufman was in Milwaukee on business and thought that he might as well take a short detour to the studio of his architect some two hours away. It was Kaufman's thought that Wright had been hard at work creating preliminary drawings for his weekend retreat outside Pittsburgh. Wright had suggested that much in several letters. What Kaufman didn't know was that his architect didn't have anything to show, not even a simple sketch on the back of a napkin. It was not that Wright wasn't interested in the project, he was. Wright didn't make sketches, though. Wright preferred to design in his mind before committing it to paper. Now, the call would have alarmed anybody else, but not Wright. He strolled out of his office with the same prideful swagger and honest arrogance he was famous for. Without saying a word, he went to the nearest drafting table. His apprentices watched from afar as the master began to work diligently. "'Give me the map of the property,' said the architect to one of his apprentices nearby." The apprentice followed the command and retrieved the detailed map of the rugged site in the middle of the Pennsylvania woods. With a piece of tracing paper over the map, Wright started to trace the major features of the site, like immovable boulders and mature trees. He reached for a blue pencil and traced, with great ease, the natural curves of the bank of a small stream. A faint blue line connecting the two banks signified the site's most notable feature, a waterfall. Next, he swapped his blue pencil with a perfectly sharpened B-grade pencil. He grabbed his T-square and triangle and began moving them swiftly around the page. With each movement, another pencil stroke was made. From the mind to the page, he continued to work. He started with the floor plan of the weekend retreat. He drew the vast living room with its ribbon windows that offered beautiful views of the site's natural wonders. He spoke his thoughts aloud and commented to his apprentices how much Kaufman's family would enjoy the views. He moved upstairs and arranged the rooms for each member of the family. There was a room for Junior, who was an apprentice of Wright's for a time. There was also Kaufman and his wife, who required separate bedrooms. Wright also made comments on how much they would enjoy their rooms. With his T-square, Wright made long, sharp lines that created the defining elements of the house. The terraces that projected out of the main core of the house. The largest of the terraces was especially impressive because it extended over the waterfall. An interesting choice, thought some of his apprentices watching him. The first drawing was done. He moved it to the side and grabbed another sheet of paper. He would make two more drawings that would give the client a rough idea of what the house would look like. One was a section, which cut the house right through the middle to give a glimpse of how the house would look inside. He included rough measurements of the size of the rooms and the height of the ceilings. All the while, the clock continued to tick. Wright embarked on a third drawing, an elevation. This drawing would give a view of what the exterior of the house would look like. What was evident was how prominent the house's terraces would be. They branched out beautifully from the rest of the house and impressively cantilevered over the natural landscape. Time was up. No sooner did the last pencil stroke make it on the page that the sound of an arriving car was heard. It was Kaufman. 
He was ushered into the drafting room by a secretary and was greeted by the group of apprentices and the impressive stature of Wright. Wright extended his hand and said with a casual voice, We've been waiting, E.J. Kaufman was shown the drawings. He observed the plans, and his face gave little hints as to what he was thinking. He was not sure about the placement of the house above the waterfall at first. Why put the house there? Kaufman asked. I thought you were going to put the house looking at the waterfall. Wright, as if waiting for the question, was happy to give his response. E.J., I want you to live with the waterfall. Wright explained how Kaufman would be able to hear the calming sounds of rushing water from the kitchen or the living room. Such an impact couldn't be achieved downstream looking up at the waterfall. If the house was downstream, the waterfall would be like a painting. With this design, the waterfall was part of the house. Kaufman was sold on the idea. He told Wright he wanted the house built exactly as it appeared in the drawings. Kaufman walked away with a smile on his face and the promise that he would soon be in possession of one of the most iconic houses in the world. It's hard to believe that Frank Lloyd Wright's most iconic house was first designed in just two hours. The rest, as they say, is history. Two years later, the house would leap from those preliminary drawings and take shape in the woods of Pennsylvania, perfectly positioned over the waterfall. Falling water, as Wright called it, was his return to the architecture scene. At this time, European modernists were monopolizing the architectural spotlight. European modernism was a rejection of the organic and instead embracing the mechanical. Modernism removed ornamentation, but most unnerving to Wright was that modern architecture did not care to place a building within its landscape. This was evident in the buildings by architects like Le Corbusier and Mies van der Rohe. Wright saw these buildings as being cold and uninviting, a far cry from his organic architecture that championed for a building to be built within nature. That being said, it was clear in Falling Water that modernism influenced Wright's design. There are many similarities between Falling Water and the work of the modernists. Wright's house featured a flat roof and ribbon windows along the house, both points from Le Corbusier's Five Points of Architecture. And while Falling Water takes cues from modernism, it still captures Wright's vision for an organic architecture. The result is an unforgettable house. When it was unveiled to the public, there was no denying that Frank Lloyd Wright was back on top of the architecture profession. Seeing Falling Water, you understand why it's so renowned. It's a house that perfectly blends into the natural environment of the site, at the same time standing out with a bold modern statement. That's the brilliance of Wright at work. With Falling Water, he was able to create a house that would change the landscape of architecture forever. And to think that it all began with an idea that flowed from the mind of a visionary architect onto the page like a, well, like a waterfall. There you have it, the first episode of the Architecture by Design podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. We have plenty of interesting stories waiting to be shared, and we hope you'll join us as we discover more from the wonderful world of architecture. In the meantime, for your fix of interesting content from the world of architecture, visit archbydesign.com. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter to see great pictures of great buildings from around the world. And get updates when new articles and new shows are released. And if you'd be so kind, if you enjoyed this show, to give us a like and subscribe to our channel for even more great architecture content. We'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, my name is Steve. Thank you for listening and watching. And I'll see you next time on the Architecture by Design podcast.